Are you ready, Ms. B? Yeah. Okay. So for expectation of x squared, that's just um, the summation, x squared, and the probability, right? Right? P raised to power x together, 1 minus p raised to power n minus x. Uh, x from 0 to n. So again, the first thing we did, that's what we did the last time also. When x is equal to 0, it vanishes. So it's going to start from x is equal to 1 to n. x squared, n combination x, p to power x, 1 minus p, n minus x. We got this, right? What's the problem, please? I don't need any destruction, I need concentration, and tell me when I get stuck. All right. <clears throat> we expand this, we write it in a better form, and take one x out. So when we do that, we're going to get x is equal to 1 to n, x squared, n factorial, right? Mm -hmm. n minus x factorial, x factorial, so that one of these we cancel. And uh, p to power x, 1 minus p, n minus x. So. When one of these cancel, I'm just going to write the result. So we have summation, x is equal to 1 to n, 1x remaining, so that this becomes what? n minus x factorial and what? x minus 1. x minus 1 factorial. I need it to speak and speak louder. p to power x, 1 minus p to power n minus x. We got it up to this point. Then we transform the variable by letting x minus 1 be another variable, y, right? So let y be x minus 1, so that our x will be equal to y minus 1. No, our x will be equal to y plus 1. And um, rather than from x minus 1, it's going to be from y is equal to 0. Rather than from x equal to 1, to be y is equal to 0. And for them to be n in number, to be y is equal to 0 to n minus 1, because they have to be n in number. So, so expectation of x squared now becomes summation y is equal to 0 to n minus 1, y plus 1, uh, n minus y minus 1, yes? Then uh, y factorial, yes? Uh, p to power y plus 1 n factorial. I'm only transforming the variable x and y. This is based on the counter. Okay? Not affecting this. So we have uh, 1 minus p, n minus y minus 1. Okay? So then we split this into 2. We got that right by splitting this into 2. And also, we can take n out by making this n minus 1 because we're going to be dealing with n minus 1s. So this could be, before we split it, we can have y is equal to 0, n minus 1, y plus 1, n into n minus 1 factorial, then n minus 1 minus y factorial, y factorial, p to power y, p, 1 minus p, n minus 1 minus y. So n and p can be released. n p, y equals to 0 to n minus 1, y plus 1, n minus 1 minus y, y factorial, n minus 1 factorial, p to power y, 1 minus p, n minus 1 minus y. I think we got it up to this point. Then we split into two because of this. We split into two, we get NP, two summations, one containing Y, to power y, 1 minus p, n minus 1 minus y. Then the other one does not contain y.
Yes? So this we already established also that it's going to be one. Right? So this was what we couldn't finish that thing. So let's say NP into bracket A plus B. So A is the first one, B is the second one. Alright? So now let's simplify A and B separately. So where A is equal to summation, yes? Y is equal to 0 to n minus 1. Y times. So again, instead of y times, can we skip that step because of the factorial? There's a y factorial at the bottom, right? Or oh, maybe I write it first. Let's write it first. n minus 1 minus y factorial, y factorial, n minus 1 at the top. Then p to power y, 1 minus p, n minus 1 minus y. So this is exactly the same as, no, before then. This, if you can delete this, right, to have y minus 1, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But then, if you have y minus 1 factorial, there's no y minus 1 here, so we don't need that step yet. What we could do is to substitute 0. Again, mm. when we substitute zero again, one term is this is gone. Mm. So we are having one to n minus one, right? Then we can redo the same transformation that we did on x to y. Am I making sense? And introduce a another maybe z like we did the last time. <coughs> we were right. We we're still doing the right thing. We just didn't have enough uh, time. So y is equal to one. That then you have y here. Then you have n minus 1 factorial, you have n minus 1 minus y factorial, y factorial, p to power y, 1 minus p, n minus 1 minus y. So yes, we are. Then this can delete that. So you have y is equal to 1 to n minus 1. Then you have n minus 1 minus y factorial, then y minus 1 factorial. Understood? Mr. B? Okay, this makes sense? So, now, what we need to now do is this y minus 1 should be a new variable so that that variable can start from 0. So, because there are n minus 1 in number, from 0 to where? Mm -hmm. Again, from 1 to n minus 1 means there are n minus 1 terms. If the new variable z start from 0, it will be from 0 to where? n minus 2. That's the point I'm trying to make. So let's y minus 1 be some variable z. So that's what I mean by we're doing the same thing again, such that y is equal to z plus 1. If y is equal to z plus 1, then our a becomes summation from z equals to 0 to n minus 2. Yes? From z is equal to 0 to n minus 2. Uh, the numerator is still n minus 1, right? So we can say n minus 1 bracket n minus 2 factorial. Understood? Remember, to have that uh, binomial, you must have maybe uh, r is equal to 0 to n n combination r, right? A raised to power r or n minus r. One of them is n minus r, the other is r. To have that. So your numerator of the combination must be the end of the summation. Because you are going to end up having n factorial, n minus r factorial, r factorial, right? This numerator hmm, must be the end of your summation. So if my numerator, if my, the end of my summation is n minus 2, I should be working towards this already. Okay? So <clears throat> my denominator is n minus 1. No. I have what? Uh, n minus 1 minus z minus 1. Agree? Talk to me, please. Remember, I must have n minus, okay, so this is a to power r 
which bar n minus r. So one of them must have whatever I have here. Let's see what we can have here. So this is y is z plus 1. Yes? Mm -hmm. So I should be able to, am I, I better say something wrong? What's that? Oh, here. Y minus 1. So y minus 1 is not z plus 1. So that is just z, right? Yes. Uh, z factorial. Thank you. I was looking here again instead of here. So I have p to power z plus 1. 1 minus p raised to power n minus 1 minus z minus 1. Something like this. Which is just n minus z. So I have n minus 2. I'm supposed to have n minus 2 minus z. Do I, do I have that? Yes. Yeah. So that's a combination already, right? Then, so I only need p raised to power z here. Am I making sense? Look, your numerator, n minus, so this and this in one of them, while the other one takes only this one. So this is like your r. So it should be just p raised to power r. While the other one has numerator minus this z again, which we can see here, okay? And we can also see that here. Do you understand that? So my n minus, this is the reason this factorial was extended. So now I can take something out. In fact, two things can be out. P and n minus one, do you agree? Is it? Then sigma, z is equal to zero, n minus two, then what? n minus 2 factorial, n minus 2 minus z factorial, z factorial, yes? p raised to power z, then 1 minus p raised to power n minus 2 minus z. So this is strictly n minus 2 combination z. So we have a to b, p into n minus 1, summation z from 0 to n minus 2, n minus 2 combination z, p raised to power z, 1 minus p, n minus 2 minus z. Okay? And so this is what we need. p into bracket n minus 1, while the rest gives you what? What is this result? Yes? Don't waste time, please. P, P plus, P plus one, one, minus P. 1 minus P. The power of the one is two. Minus two. That's it. Just compare with this. This is A plus B to power of N. If you are able to have this arrangement, it is simply these two having those powers, everything raised to power at the end of this series. That's the pattern. So in this case, your n is n minus 2. So you can see, your n is n minus 2. Your a is p, and your b is 1 minus z, while your r is z. Understand that? Talk to me, miss. So this is p n minus 1, so that is p n minus 1, sum of that bracket is 1. So that is 1 raised to the power n minus 2, which is just 1. So basically you have p into bracket n minus 1, and that's our a. Our b is 1, we already established that. So and b is equal to summation y is equal to 0 to n minus 1, n minus 1 factor, uh, factorial, n minus 1 minus y factorial, y factorial, p to power y, 1 minus p to power n minus 1 minus y. So this is also a combination of uh, something, right? The expansion of something. What is that? Someone else, apart from crystal. Do I write as combination first? To make it clearer y is equal to 0, n minus 1, n minus 1 combination y, 
periods to power y, 1 minus p to power n minus 1 minus y. So this is what? Yes, speak louder. P plus 1 minus p. So that is 1 raised to the power n minus 1, which is 1. So now that we have our a and b, let's put it back. So this implies that expectation of x squared is equal to np into bracket a plus b, which is np into bracket. So we can expand this because of the bracket. That's np minus p, right? So np minus p plus 1. Opening the bracket, we have n squared p squared minus n p squared plus n p. Okay? And now variance can be established. So variance, uh oh, what happened? We can raise it. <laughs> so variance of x, which is expectation of x squared minus expectation of x all squared, is what? n squared p squared, talk to me please. Minus, minus n p squared plus n p uh, minus n p all squared n p all squared, which is the expectation of x. So that is n squared p squared minus n p squared plus n p minus n squared p squared again. So the first and the last are gone. We can rearrange this so that the positive comes first. So our variance is simply n p minus np squared, which you factorize into np bracket 1 minus p, and that is what is provided in our formula booklet. Okay? So next, it's even on the board, you can see it's written there in that example. So there's no need to memorize this in your formula booklet. The reason I want us to show it is to see how different topics connect. You can see we are using topic 1, binomial expansion, Okay, we are using summation, sigma notation in your series, and all other stuff. Okay, quickly. This is one example. So, in summary, the expectation, which is the mean in a binomial uh, probability distribution, the mean is a binomial distribution is NP, which is the number of trials times probability of success in each trial. Okay, why the variance is given by NP into bracket 1 minus P, which is more or less NP key. In some textbooks, you might see NP Q. Q is this number of failure. Okay, so the variance is simply number of trial times number uh, probability of success times probability of failure, not number of failure. Understood? Okay. So quickly, we we'll look at, uh, we we'll listen to it. In this example, the random variable x is the number of sixes that result when a die is rolled 12 times. Assuming the trials are independent and the die is fair, each outcome will have the same probability, one sixth. We conclude that X has a binomial distribution with N equals 12 and P equals one sixth. The mean of a binomial random variable is NP. So in this case, the mean is 2. On average, we expect a 6 to be rolled twice in this binomial experiment. The variance of a binomial random variable is given by the formula n times p times 1 minus p. We substitute n and p and find that the variance is 5 thirds. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is about 1.291. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Uh, so can I ask you to just try question one? Let's look at question one. No need to draw the color, the column graph. Since there are six um, trials, so x would be like 0 to 6, basically, right? So that means you have to draw seven columns. I don't want you to waste time on that. Just compute the mean and standard deviation, OK? No need to draw the graph. If you don't draw the graph, of course, you can't know the shape of distribution. But from the experiment, you can remember when it is 0 0.5, what do you expect for the shape of distribution? 
when P is 0 0.5. Symmetric, 0 0.2 and the 0 0.8. So even without drawing, you should know, all right? So we don't want to waste time. Find the mean and standard deviation for each of those P's and that. So if anyone is fast and you are done with that, you might try number two and number three. I'll stop you in about five minutes, then we'll look at the correction for the short test. Mm. One, two, three, but only one, one A, B, C for Roman figure one. Just the main and standard deviation for each of those P's. Do I need to zoom in on the screen or it's okay? Karen, is that a yes zoom in or yes okay? Yes Sorry, please, no time. Twelve minutes to the end of the class. I'll stop you in two minutes. So we have the last ten minutes to do this explanation.
want to go out? Yeah, sure. I want to start in a minute. Okay. So five. Please pay attention here. You've done this. The question says a random variable x has the following probability distribution. What value may a and b take? What do you get as your a? 2 over 3. 2 over 3. So you had everything, b disappears at first, right? Then you get a to be 2 over 3. But you are not able to get b because b vanished in the addition. But the question still says what may b take? Yes? B can only be what? 0 to 1. What? Uh, I didn't hear that. I mean repeat. More than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to Just 1. Just say B lies between 0 and 1. That's it. Because if, if you solve it, uh, you're solving equation, you've done equation solving in the past, it means that B can take infinitely many values. But B can just take any value in R. Otherwise, some, in some of them, this will not be a probability anymore. Probability has to be between 0 and 1. And you can't multiply by whole number. You can only multiply by a fraction. You cannot multiply by negative, otherwise it affects the fact that it is a probability. So while your A is this, your B must lie between 0 and 1. Inclusive, of course. Okay? Because clearly, when you had it, B disappears. And your A comes out. It means B can take any value, but not just any value. Any value between, it has to be a proper fraction, a positive proper fraction. Or, worst case scenario, zero, so that this probability is zero. And when it is one, so that this probability is one over three, and whatever this is as well. Understand? Okay, so that's that about that. The next question there says, find expectation of X. I believe that is easy. Did you get that also? It's just simply the sum of x probability of x. Okay? So, 0. Uh, I think the expectation of x would not contain a. Right? It will only contain b. Uh, and the expectation of x squared for the variance, you start with expectation of x squared. You get x squared probability of x. Does that contain a? No. So, your expectation of x and variance will contain only b because of this value. 0 times whatever, any time. OK? All right. For the second one, uh, I'll send you the detailed solution. Like I said, I'm just rushing through the point because of the time. Let x be a random variable. Variance is that, and mu is that. So this.